When this quarantine time is over, what is the first thing you're gonna go out in the world and do? Pray. No. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't need to pray on bathe in his blood. I also miss feeling famous. Well, hello, how's quarantine treating you? It's doing so good, I just, I think I'm built for this. I mean, obviously I'm disappointed about my tours being all rescheduled. All my tours have been rescheduled to 2021. But it's like, it's not like it's cancellation, it's a reschedule. So once I got over that, I was like, well, what can I control? So it's like, I can sell makeup, I can make videos, I can record demos and write music. There's a million ways for me. I mean, think about it. The, the, the hour I spent on stage is nothing compared to the amount of work around that. So in a lot of ways, it's business as usual, except for being homebound instead of on a tour bus. I was gonna say, I know you're a capitalist, so I was wondering how <laughs> that was I am being a capitalist, impacted. But she, <laughs> I am a capitalist for sure. I mean, that's the Trixie Mattel way is like, we, we really find a way to sell anything. And I mean, luckily for my cosmetics company, people might be locked in their houses, but people are still whores. Like people are still buying mass amounts of like clown makeup, which is wonderful. Um, and then also people are still listening to my music and watching my streams and supporting my YouTube channel. It's been great. And my movie is on Netflix right now because everyone's home. Moving Parts has been under popular on Netflix for like four weeks now. I think every living person has seen it at this point, so. Well, maybe quarantine is the best time to be Trixie Mattel. Quarantina Aguilera, my new drag name. I know you have an issue saying a soft hello. What is your Zoom or video chat hello like? Oh, she said hi. Oh, it's a sensual high. It's sensual, it's very sensual, yeah. Are you quarantined with the boyfriend? Or are you all alone? What's happening? Oh, he comes over like, he'll come and stay for like five days and then go back to his house for like four days. We try to not do too much like back and forth. Um, but uh, he was just here for like five days and then now I'll probably be home alone for like a week. And um, I try to film while he's gone, you know, do my YouTube videos, my beauty videos, stuff like that. Um, but, we have the internet and FaceTime and like, we still talk all the time. I was gonna see if it was testing the relationship in any way, but it seems like that's also business as usual. We've been together like almost four years. So like this isn't, if we had just started dating and then it was like, I love you. I wish we were together all the time because our love is magic and our kisses create smiles. You know, like we've been together long enough that it's like, we just come over next week for sex. And then, you know, then we, then we can be like, not see each other for like five days. <laughs> one week off, one week on. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like um, divorced parents. <laughs> yeah, besides, the, I guess a lot of relationships are gonna be tested by this, but we don't live together because I'm not um, crazy. <laughs> do you live with your boyfriend? I do. He's. I have relegated him to the other room to film Do this. you feel weird? Because that's like me too. I feel weird when he's here. I'm like, if I'm gonna do a stream or something, I'm like, you can't be here. You need to go. Yeah, no, we're going, in and out, like he has Zoom calls too, so it's like we just switch spaces all day long. It's real fun. Yeah, <laughs> I feel beautiful though. You look beautiful. Have you been doing you a lot of Zoom? I mean, if you could see the light, the light. I mean, I'm ready. She oh wow, ready. you're ready for the apocalypse comes. You'll still be putting out content. I know. Well, luckily we were doing, you know, my YouTube channel stuff. So like, I already had lights and and microphones and cameras and all that. So like when this happened, and luckily I was already doing streams from time to time, so I already had a good grasp on streaming software. So like, you know, I don't have to be the drag queen on an iPhone 3 in the dark holding a camera at this level with no wig on being like, please bed me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I get to give a little more fantasy. Yeah, we, um, we chatted with Shangela the other day and she just had a bare light, like a lamp with the shade off right in front of her, blasting her out. <laughs> she lights like she sews. And though I know the traditional industry has been hit hard, how can we support drag artists at this time? Well, if the drag queen is, you know, giving you a hand job in a car, drive slow. Um, you don't need to take those pipe turns. That um, is not proper social distancing. <laughs> ah! Um, well, what else? I mean, well, there's drag shows every, all the time now, um, all levels. I mean, if you want to get online, the other night I caught Sonique from Drag Race in like a bikini lip syncing on Instagram Live in her bedroom. I mean, there's that level. There's high production. 
But think about it, your tweet, your vote, your mailing list, your Venmo dollar, there's a million ways to be supportive. So even if you're just showing up to a stream or just tweeting it, retweet it. Like everything you do helps. And honestly, most drag queens at our hearts, I don't think everybody's as hardcore of a capitalist as me. Most people are doing it because they love it. And so if you love their work, you can support them. Well, we can also tune into RuPaul's secret celebrity drag race starting Friday, which you're going to be a part of. Yes, I am. Let us have it. Welcome to RuPaul's secret celebrity drag race, full of star transformations so gag-worthy, you'll need to see it to believe it. I know, originally it was just called uh, uh, Drag Race, and then I came and they called it Celebrity Drag Race. Um, oh, but I will say, you. I will say most of these performers, the great thing is, they are, um, you know, singers, actors, personalities. Uh, they're performers in some way. And so the transformative power of makeup and costumes and hair, it's not new to them. And there is something about like, when you look different, you perform different. And so for celebrities, it, it ends up being sort of a, um, it ends up being a language where they're like, I can't speak it, but I understand it. You know what I mean? What they do okay. pick up quickly. But I will say, uh, you know, for the first time we saw our celebrities putting on, and when I, when I <laughs> my, the celebrity I mentored, when I saw him pick up that makeup brush, I knew, I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't even need to see the brush on the face. I was like, just the way he held it, like a, like a, like a death grip, like, all right. Um, but that's what's fun about it is I don't want to watch Drag Race where everything's, everyone's good at everything. I want to see raw enthusiasm transformed into surprising talent, you know? Yeah. So break down how the show works, because we know very little about it. All we've seen is that little, like, 30-second teaser. Each week, um, non-professional drag queens, who happen to be widely known celebrities, have chosen to come compete on Drag Race in iconic drag race style challenges impersonations, dancing, singing, musicals. They're actually doing challenges very similar to what professional drag queens are doing. And they're having to do it like drop of a hat. You just started wearing a wig yesterday. Now you're on the main stage in front of RuPaul, in front of TV and God doing this. Um, and so the celebrities, while they do have sort of an incentive to win, uh, like um, financially, like for charity and stuff, a, a lot of them actually have kind of a personal reason for being there, which kind of makes it better because a lot of them have something they're looking to gain from this experience. Obviously, they all want to, the, the masses of Drag Race to find out, like, here's my Twitter, whatever. But they actually all have, like, I was really surprisingly touched. Like, the celebrity that I worked with, we got really close, and I was like, I had no idea you were here to, like, get all that from this. I spent a lot of time with gay people. And I'm not always the most comfortable around like straight people. And um, it was a learning experience for me too. I didn't expect to go there and like, you will laugh and you will cry. Let's just say that. It's a surprisingly touching show. I was, I was like, gonna you, ask tricked, what... you guys tricked me into having feelings <laughs> on television again. Hey, what surprised you about it? So it was <laughs> that how kind of grounded it was, I guess. Yes, because on the first day, it's very like, it's going to be a great time. We're all going to have a great time. By the, by the end of their training experience and their performance, I'm invested. I am invested. And drag queens are nothing if not competitive. And so like us as mentors, we're sort of like, aren't they great? But it is like, that is my daughter on the swim team. And if she doesn't <laughs> win, I will let the air out of your tires. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so we're very invested. Um, and, and then the, the queens, the, the new drag queens, they're obviously trying to win money for their, you know, philanthropic endeavors, but also they're trying to like um, learn something about themselves from the experience and they actually do. And it's actually very touching. Did being back in that space make you like want to compete again at all? Or are you happy to be in this mentor role now? The best thing about being on Drag Race this time was knowing nothing bad was going to happen to me, Tracy Martell. It was like, Finally, this is the insurance policy I wanted the whole time, which is like, nothing bad's gonna happen to me. I love that. Um, I really, really liked that about the experience is like, I get to be in the culture without having to like, you know what I mean? Like look over my shoulder. Cause I'm not, I'm not very, 
Um, not a great competitor. Some people competition brings out the best in them. For me, it maybe doesn't always bring out the best. Um, so, but no, a I lot of the other mentors are, there's a lot of really competitive, really good drag queen mentors. <laughs> and, um, you know, we all approach things differently. I'm a little more hands-on with people. Like, if I want someone to know what it feels like to get in drag, I need to start putting them in drag. I want to see the hair, the jewelry, the costume. Like, to me, once you're in it, you feel it, and then you can do it. Okay, so we're going to see different styles of stage mom. Oh, yeah. Some of us are a little more eat, pray, love. Some of us are a little more like, you're going to do it until you <laughs> do it right. You know, so. Which I got well, really invested. I'm not going to lie. I got really invested. It's definitely that stage mom thing too of like the mentors watching them perform, gripping each other's hands. You can hear the bones breaking, like, you know, <laughs> this is serious. I'm excited to see it. And it's paired right up with season 12, which is a little more, I think like halfway-ish through. How are you feeling about season 12? Who are you keeping an eye on? Well, I mean, I'm from Milwaukee and Jade and I have been doing drag since we were both like 20. So like, Jade and I are going really, Jade used to come shop for makeup at my makeup counter when I worked at the Mac counter. So like we've gone, we've gone really far back and it's hard to really see anybody beating her because she's good at everything. And always, and literally, I'm not kidding, Jada has looked like this since she like came out of the box. There's been no improvement. She's been this beautiful forever, forever. She's been the most beautiful drag queen in Milwaukee forever. So. And I feel like she's playing a good game because she's kind of, she's not under the radar, but she's kind of like right at the radar. She's not yeah, she's making not too like, many waves yet. She's not like cheating out on the couch and like going for storyline. And she's not like, you know what I mean? She's not playing the game too hard. Yeah. And she, her voice is so funny to me. I mean, she just has such a like, chow, like a really <laughs> like child every other word. It's very <laughs> endearing. She's a very endearing speaking voice. Totally. No, I've enjoyed watching her. All right, to wrap things up here, when this quarantine time is over, what is the first thing you're gonna go out in the world and do? Pray. No. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't need to pray on bathe in his blood. Um, but also, <laughs> I would like to go to the Golds because the day before the quarantine, I left my house keys at the Golds. So I haven't been able to lock my door. Nobody robbed me. <laughs> As in the Gold's Gym? The Gold's Gym, my house keys are there. They're like, what do your keys look like? I said, it's a pink keychain with a bunch of little Barbie dolls on it and it has a Tamagotchi on it. And they're like, we can't find it. So I know that's not like relatable content, um, but I'll probably go there. And also, um, whenever I'm home, I'm used to going out with my boyfriend. We go to dinner a lot. So I'm like, I miss going to Hugo's and Kitchen 24 and the conservatory in West Hollywood. I miss going to drag shows in general. So I just miss going out to the gay bar and, and watching drag queens and getting drunk. Is that sad? I'm 30. <laughs> no, so your first order of business is just be gay when you get out. <laughs> yeah, I also miss Go feeling spread famous. that around the world, yeah. Yeah, I miss feeling famous. I miss going places and have people recognize me. <laughs> like I'm gonna go to like the Apple store, Forever 21, all the gay hotspots to get noticed when this is over. Those are the gay hotspots, the Apple Store and Forever 21. Completely, yeah, in the Mac counter. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the Grove and just like um, wear tight jeans and stand there and wait for people to stare at me. Sounds like the perfect plan. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks for making the time to talk to us. Good to Thank virtually you, Bryce. see you. Bye. Bye. Oh, a soft bye. A soft, sensual bye. Yes, a sensual bye. <laughs> <laughs>